I want to show you a treasure from the vault. This is just neat, and we know it's neat because I'm wearing the gloves, and so you know it, it's gonna be pretty neat. This comes out of a folder here that says Isaac Newton, and we have a letter. This is what a 17th century letter looked like. It was all folded up. Um, the part that you saw when you, when you received it in the mail was just this right here. So this was the front and this was the back. This is a bit of sealing wax here that, that sealed it all. For his honored friend, Mr. Robert Hooke, at his lodgings in Gresham College in London. Four pence. It cost four pence to send the letter. But there are no postage stamps. No postage stamps, no, no, nothing, nothing like that. And on the other side, we have the actual text. It's Cambridge, February 2nd, 1677 or 78, we're not really sure. And the text goes on and on down here, the page, it continues over here. We're only gonna have one page, so he was going to be very economical with it. It says, your humble servant, I, Newton. So this is in fact a letter by Isaac Newton to Robert Hooke. And since I don't know very much about that, I asked Professor Michael Friedlander in physics here at Washington University to come and, and talk about it a little and tell us why this uh, is important other than just the fact that it's really neat that we have a letter from Isaac Newton to Robert Hooke. So Michael, what, uh, well, what can you, you tell us about Well, thank you for inviting me. I think one of the first things to strike one, strike one is how good the handwriting is. It's a very good bit of calligraphy. Very neatly done. Perhaps you'd like to read it out. What does he say? I well, made a transcription of it. it. It's a little hard to read, so it's easier to get it from the, from the transcription. Let me read it carefully. Sir, upon the receipt of a letter from Mr. Aubrey, wherein I was desired to signify to you what I intended to do about Mr. Lucas' letters, I wrote you, you word that I would take care that they should be printed here. But two days since I was deprived of them by an unhappy accident of a candle which consumed them amongst several other papers which lay upon my table, but without doing further hurt. If, therefore, Mr. Oldenburg, Oldenburg was the secretary of the Royal Society, if, therefore, Mr. Oldenburg's papers, wherein the Royal Society are concerned, are yet gotten out of the hands of his executrix, I would desire that you take care of what you may find concerning Mr. Lintz's friends and me. There is one letter of Mr. Gascoigne and three of Mr. Lucas. If you can meet with them amongst his papers, I would beg either the letters or copies of them, as you shall think convenient. But if these papers are yet in the hands of his executrix, then I would desire you to convey the enclosed to Mr. Lucas' correspondence to be sent to Liège. Mr. Aubrey will again, <coughs> excuse me, will acquaint you who it is, your observations about the pro proportions of the length of the image. He's talking about images of the sun going through prisms and mm -hmm. what the, the shape of the image was on the opposing wall. He's talking about the length of the image to its breadth. I shall not now make use of it and therefore shall give you no further trouble to search for them. I will only beg this favour of either repairing my loss out of Mr. Oldenburg's study or conveying the enclosed to Liège. Will you please, will you, you will therefore very much oblige me, sir, your humble servant, I. Newton. Well, there was an accident in Newton's study. Do we know about this? Did it, what, yes. what happened? Apparently, Newton, well, we have to remember that there was no electricity and that the source of illumination would be a candle or several candles. There was a fire and Newton lost the papers, but Newton apparently had duplicates of many of these things. So it's not clear what was really lost or just inconveniently lost. Well, it was clear that, it, it's clear that here he had copies, he had given copies of some yeah. of his documents to someone else, yeah. and so that was what he, what, what he was hoping to get. Yeah. Um, and clearly, because he says, I would just like a copy of them, mm. we know that he wasn't worried that the originals might circulate or something. Yeah. It's just the information he wants. Well, but the other thing is that Newton apparently was in the habit of mentioning in his letters, I have done so-and-so, and I have done so-and-so, and I've done the mathematics, but he never divulged the details. Oh, that's awkward. Uh, well, he was trying to protect, as we say now, priority. He was the first one to have done this, that, and the other, but he didn't want to let on what it was. Do we have any idea what were in these papers that he wanted so much? The big um, dispute going on between Newton and Hooke and others later was, what is the nature of light? How do you explain various phenomena which you see? 
Um, if you have sunlight going through a prism, it's broken into different colors. Why? What is the nature of light that it, it gets broken? Can you recombine these to get white light again? Or um, is the color the result of the light falling onto a paper or onto a desk or whatever it is? Um, and there's disagreement. Even at that stage, there were two theories or models, as we would say. One theory, one model was that light consists of waves. Yes. And you can show waves will behave in certain ways when the waves, the light waves, go through very small apertures or go through several apertures or one very small one which is changed in size. And so the wave picture was being developed. The other picture, which Newton um, pushed, was what we'd call a corpuscular theory or particle theory, that light particles. consisted of particles. And Newton was enamored of this because particles would have a gravitational attraction and he could try to explain some things in that way. So this was bitterly Of course, contested. he wasn't wrong about that. No, he wasn't, but um, he was right for the wrong reasons. And his prestige was such that his views won out for quite a while and it took many more experiments and some which were absolutely crucial, um, which showed that he was wrong or only partly wrong. Um, interestingly enough, one of the clinching experiments to show the wave nature and particle nature of light was carried out on this campus. Arthur Compton, as Chancellor in the early 1920s, was Professor of Physics before he came as Chancellor, and he carried out experiments with X-rays. And he showed that you could describe the behavior of X-rays by treating X-rays as quanta, using the term, the newer term, as though they were particles. And he was able to get an exact description of X-ray scattering. So it's strange that we have this concurrence of interests. So we, we suspect that the papers that Newton was trying to get back must have contained some experimental data on light, on his work on in optics. Probably, but it, they were probably duplicating uh, what he has written in other places as well. Mm. So I don't think that the professionals think that there's any major gap. It's just it would be nice if the, the collection had all of the letters, and we may be able to repair it, not to give them this, but to authenticate a copy. So there you have it. This is our treasure from the vault for today. Genuine letter from Isaac Newton to Robert Hooke. I'd just like to remind you that all of these things are things that you can come and see at the Washington University Special Collections and Olin Library, as your library has treasures.